Well, in our journey through the book of Revelation, we're getting towards the end of this journey and we are longing for that picture that we're going to see of the new Jerusalem, where that end is more glorious than you can dream. But before we get there, John is given this picture of the fall of Babylon. And we'll see very clearly that Babylon is not home. The sermon I preached from this section, I called, All That Glitters Is Not Gold. Because we see this glorious picture, in some ways glorious, of Babylon being painted for us. But as outwardly beautiful as she may appear, as alluring as she may seem, She's deadly. And that's what we'll see as we go through this section. As always, I urge you, please go read through this big section all the way from chapter 17, verse 1 to 19, verse 10. And just have a look at what we're told about Babylon the Great. She's pictured as a prostitute, a woman riding on a dragon. She's pictured as drunk on the blood of the saints. And she's spoken of as the great city, the mighty city of Babylon. So go track through this section and have a look at what we're told about Babylon and what we're told about her fall and note down any other important details that you see and spend some time praying that God would open your eyes to understand glorious things about him and the home that he has prepared for us and help ask him to help you to see how Babylon is not home. Just with regards to literary context, in chapter, so Revelation 14, verse 8, uh, we heard the second angel crying out, Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. And this section is uh, giving us, it's expanding, fleshing out the fall of Babylon. And then also right at the end of the previous section, in chapter 16, verse 19 to 21, Again, we heard the words, God remembered Babylon. And when God remembered Babylon, it's not a good thing. God is remembering uh, all that she's done throughout the centuries against him and against his people. And so we've been given these hints at the fall of Babylon. And in this section, that is fleshed out for us. For some important Old Testament context for Babylon, uh, you can go and read the book of Daniel, where God's people are in Babylon with Nebuchadnezzar and just see how Nebuchadnezzar sets himself up against God. Um, going even further back, you can go and read Genesis 11, where the Tower of Babel, people wanted to make a name for themselves and it's on the plains of Shinar, which is the latest site for the city of Babylon. So all the way from Genesis 11, we've seen people setting themselves up against God. In a number of the prophets, we hear about the fall of Babylon, but probably the most comprehensive would be in Jeremiah 50 and 51, two long chapters describing the fall of Babylon and why she must fall. An opening important thing to get our heads around, when Babylon the Great is spoken of here, it isn't Babylon the city in uh, the Arabian Peninsula. Rather, it is Babylon symbolic in Revelation of people who set themselves up against God. And what we'll see throughout this section is that those who set themselves up against God, they may gain great wealth, they may enjoy life here in Babylon, but one day Babylon will fall and they will fall with it. So firstly, let's just trace through this big section everything that we're told about Babylon, who is called firstly the great prostitute. And we're told a number of times about those who committed adultery with her. So 
So there is a whole lot that we are told about Babylon, this great prostitute she's called. And as I've said, she is a picture of evil government, society, people who set themselves up against God. And the key thing that we see in this section is that Babylon will fall. Fallen, fallen is Babylon the Great. The previous section showed us these seven bowls being poured out, God's final judgment. And here we're zooming in and the angel says, come let me show you the punishment of that great prostitute. And we see this, uh, for mighty is the God who judges her. So this is punishment, judgment, doom. Uh, it's also, it's the same word as judgment. God has judged with the judgments she imposed on you. His judgments. He's condemned the great prostitute. So very clearly, it is God's judgment, his punishment on those who set themselves up against him. They may seem to prosper in this life, but in the end they will fall. And we, zo we zoom in to uh, the kings of the earth, uh, the inhabitants of the earth. So again, the inhabitants of the earth, the kings of the earth. These are the ones who enjoy the luxuries of living in Babylon, the society set up against God, but in the end, they will fall. In this section, not only do we meet the kings, but also uh, the merchants and the sea captains, and they are symbolic of all of those who, who gain luxury and wealth and the good life, the so-called good life of making Babylon home. But this whole big section is showing us as God's people that Babylon is not home. I think a very important thing for us to hold tightly to as we work through Revelation is that this is the revelation from Jesus to his church. It's given to Christians. So this isn't just a section showing the condemnation of uh, society standing opposed to God. It's very clearly showing Christians that Babylon is not home. So not home. Now just important words for us to hold as we go through this big section. And this whole section is ultimately the words of Jesus to his church. And we're told of those who uh, died because of their testimony about Jesus. Uh, we see here a very important verse. Uh, the lamb, the lamb will triumph over them. Because, so they wage war against the lamb, but the lamb will triumph because he is the Lord of lords and king of kings. And with him are his called, chosen and faithful followers. So... The lamb is in focus at the beginning and then again at the end of this section where we are told of the wedding of the lamb. And that's just a, a preview of what we're going to see in uh, the last two chapters of Revelation where the wedding supper of the lamb is going to be um, fleshed out in glorious detail for us. And this whole section is calling us to worship God. Worship Jesus. But not only is the Lamb on the throne in focus here, also um, the Lord God. And God's words are being fulfilled. God has remembered her crimes. Mighty is the Lord God who judges her. God has judged her. But then the contrast, salvation belongs to our God. Praise our God. Those who fear him. The Lord God Almighty reigns. Give him glory. His words are true. Worship God. So this whole big section should cause us to be a people who praise God, who fear him, who worship him. 
because of his righteous judgment. And then we're also told a number of things about God's holy people. Uh, here we see that this woman is drunk on the blood of God's holy people and the blood of those who bore testimony to Jesus. Um, we're told of those whose names are in the book of life or those who are not written in the book of life too. Uh, God's people are called his called, chosen and faithful followers. My people rejoice you people of God, your apostles and prophets. We told of this great multitude who we met in chapter 7, uh, verse 9 and 10. Uh, this multitude dressed in white who is singing praise to God. They are uh, his holy ones. And here in this final picture, they are the ones uh, who fear him, who are worshipping him, praising him. This great multitude again. Uh, they were also spoken of in 14 verse 2. And here they're spoken of as his bride, just giving us a prelude to the glorious end and God's holy people will be with him forever. They are the ones invited. We also see this woman is uh, sitting on a scarlet beast. The beasts we met in chapters uh, 12 and 13 So the beast is a character in uh, chapter 17. And as we saw in the previous section, uh, this beast is symbolic of world rulers and powers who set themselves up against God and his people. So we see uh, the Babylon society aligned against God, partnering with these world powers aligned against God. But what we see in this section is that actually... The beast hates the prostitute and ends up uh, turning against her. So um, God will accomplish his purposes, even through evil people. Military power, the beast, uh, will ravage the economic system, the woman uh, that it once supported. Some other kinds of words that are worth looking out for in Revelation um, is what he saw or what he heard. And we see a few times, just helps us uh, understand or see the structure of this section a bit more clearly. So what John saw is in focus in uh, chapter 17, beginning of chapter 18. But then it changes to what he heard. And what he heard, which we'll focus on in just a moment, is really important for us to take note of because what he heard is important for us as God's people to understand uh, how to apply this to ourselves. There's just one more thing that we hear repeated in the later part of the section, is this word, hallelujah. We hear it repeated four times. Interestingly, uh, this is the only time in the New Testament that this word, hallelujah, is used. Uh, these four times in chapter 19 here. And hallelujah basically uh, means praise Yahweh, praise the Lord. So uh, this is heaven's response to the fall of, of Babylon. Uh, but in this section, we don't only hear a heaven's response, we also hear earth's response, earth's perspective on the fall of Babylon. Uh, that's given... In verse 9 to 19 of chapter 18, so we're given heaven's response in chapter 18 here. And then from verse 20 all the way through to 19, verse 10, all gives us heaven's response. Uh, we'll have a look quickly at earth's response first. Uh, to the fall of Babylon, and then we'll look at heaven's response. And we hear this repetition in earth's response. Uh, woe, woe to you, great city, you mighty city of Babylon. Woe, woe to you, woe to you, great city. 
We are told of people standing far off, terrified and in torment. Again, they are standing far off. They're standing far off. So all of these people, the, the sea captains, the merchants and the kings, who all benefited from Babylon, who made Babylon their home and lived uh, with her luxuries, they end up mourning and weeping because Babylon falls and they fall with her. The world who ally against God think that they'll go on forever, but they will go down in the end. And we see uh, these are among those who uh, gain from excess, her excess luxury. So heaven is calling out the earthly excess of those who make Babylon their home. Um, we see here those who, who exploit or rape the world for themselves. They, all these luxury cargoes, even including human beings sold as slaves, um, those who make Babylon their home end up exploiting the world. Uh, they give to themselves glory and luxury that they give to themselves. They're in it. It's a me first attitude. And for all of these reasons, Babylon will fall and those will fall with her crying out a woe. You see this repetition in one hour. In one hour. In one hour. Uh, the Revelation's use of time is symbolic and one hour is just like snap of the fingers. It's done. They seemed so great, but their fall is even greater. But then we see heaven's response, and heaven responds with this cry of rejoice. Hallelujah. Uh, she has fallen. Those who uh, shed the blood of the prophets and God's holy people, uh, we see that repeated in the blood of God's holy people. This woman was drunk on that blood, um, but they will fall. And heaven rejoices, crying out hallelujah. But I think in many ways, one of the most important things for us to see as the church uh, is here uh, in verse 4 and 5. Where we've got this imperative, imperative, a verb that is com a command. Uh, heaven says to God's people, come out of her. Don't make Babylon your home. Because Babylon is not home. And if we think back to the early letters in chapters 2 and 3, uh, in chapter 2, verse 18 uh, to 29, we we're told Thyatira had become too comfortable in Babylon. And then in chapter 3, verse 14 to 22, we we're told of Laodicea, who again were complacent. They had made Babylon their home in a dangerous way, and churches like that, which all churches are in danger of becoming, are called here to come out of her. A Babylon's not home. Don't make Babylon your home. Rather, remember what is to come when the wedding of the Lamb will be our final destiny. The wedding supper of the Lamb, where God's holy people will be counted among the blessed ones, those who are invited to this Lamb, the, the, that wedding supper of the Lamb, those who make it to that glorious end, victorious, that's home. Babylon is not home. And so this whole big section is urging us, if you hope to make it to this glorious end among the victorious ones, then make sure that you don't make Babylon your home. Remember the Lamb who was slain, the victorious Lamb, who is with us now, we saw in chapter 1, saying, Fear not, as God's sealed people endure until that day when we are seated at the wedding supper of the Lamb. Don't make Babylon home, because Babylon's going to fall. Well, as you dig into this further, I pray that God would open your eyes to understand these truths about him so that we would live as his people until that day when we are with him in glory. Well, God bless as you dig in further.